Hello world and welcome to the Axino Zingo Show episode number 78 with your boy Agostino. What's up? What's up? What's up? What's up? How the hell are you, man? How's life? How's tricks, man? I hope you're doing well. Hope you're well hydrated, well rested, and all that malarkey, and looking after your families, wherever they may be. Hopefully they're near you, holding you tight. Yeah, buddy! Woo! It's hot out there, man. I just came back from a sweltering run. Absolutely sweltering, sweltering run. I did like um set I did like eight two hundred meter sprints. I meant to do ten, but I only managed to do eight this time without my room. Without my room. Jeez, you know that tired one, you start mixing up your words. Without my form de- depleting or disappearing. <coughs> it's safe to say, right? Running is far, far harder than working out in the gym. I don't care what anyone says. Running is probably the most difficult workout you can do. Um, there's so many moments when you're running when you feel like you suck, right? You feel like you're running slow. You feel like your form is all shitty. You feel like you haven't got endurance. You feel like you're too fat. Um, you feel like you're, your legs are running in quicksand. There's so many moments when you're running where you just feel so inadequate. But at least with weights, even if you can't lift the weight you're lifting, just pick up a lighter one, you know? Um, you're feeling tired, you stop, you take a break. Um, you want to get some water, you grab some. When you're running on the street, where can you get that stuff? You can't stop. People are looking, man. You don't want to look like you're tired, so you keep running. Huh? And where's this water you're going to take with you? Are you gonna, not going to carry one of those little weird, dumb little contraptions and have the water on the side of your leg or some shit, are you? Like an idiot? You're not going to carry one of those fucking uh, water bottles that have like a hole in it and you're holding it in your hand like a, like a seven-year-old mum. Allow that shit, you yeah? know? You're young, you're virile, you know? You're, you're full of life, you're moist, you know? Look at this supple, supple skin. No cocoa butter needed, right? You feel like you can, you can get by with no water. But obviously you can't. Obviously. You're not a camel, you know? You're human. You're human. You're not camel, you're human. And you get tired. And when you get tired, your form gets all fucked up and you start running like a girl, you know? And I don't mean that to be sexist and stuff, but I mean it. I mean it more in terms of, have you ever seen a girl run across the street for a bus, you know? Arms all splayed out all over the place, legs going in all different directions. Usually because, you know, that person isn't used to running around or hasn't, you know, lived a life that allows them to, uh, hasn't lived in a neighborhood that required them to run away from police or jump over fences when dogs were chasing them because they were black and they couldn't, you know, l- l- touch dogs because there was a weird ingrained thing that dogs somehow were a form of, uh, were like a, a suppressed memory from the slave years, you know, when the plantation owners were chasing us or some shit, even though you're not from the plantation and your family came straight across from Africa anyway, and you're first generation African in this country, you're still afraid of dogs, but whatever, you know how to run, right? You've got that kind of cadence, you know what to do with your body, you know how to fucking talk your neck, you know, you know how to fucking, you know, put your shoulders you know, close to the ribs as possible, you know, dip your hands, you know, so like you're like, pretend like you're running, you're riding a bike, but you're not, you know, like one of those old school bikes with the massive wheels, you know, the big wheel at the front, the small at the back, you feel like, you know, you feel like you're one of those kind of guys, but you're not, oh, shit, man, running's hard, yo, running's hard, you know, here I am running, doing 200 meter sprints, you know, trying to keep my posture, uh, trying to make sure my heels are touching my bum, actually flicking my bum, you know, pat, that's what you hear when I'm running. <laughs> All right? You know what I mean? Huh? When I'm fucking, it's like... When I'm running... <laughs> you get me? <laughs> oh, man! It's so hard. It's so hard! I've still got a long way to go, but... This is probably the best way of doing it. Um, it comes from this book, actually. I'm going to sh- quickly show you. If you're not watching, what the fuck are you doing? But you can, you know, you can listen along. I'll describe the book to you. It's called, it's this book. It's The Unbreakable Runner by Brian McKenzie and TJ Murphy. Brian McKenzie's the founder of CrossFit Endurance, which is no more any, which is no more. I think CrossFit Endurance is CrossFit running or some shit. It's changed anyway. But the basic, the basic methodology behind this is um, it's all about form, right? So it's all about uh, making sure that you run the correct way. So it's about, um, I forgot who the guy was called. There's a name of it anyway. There's a form, there's a name that is pose running, right? It's like like pose running. So essentially what pose running is, is that you're using the force of gravity to kind of uh, pull you forward whilst you run. 
So the the idea behind it is that you're meant to lean. You know that like Michael Jackson in that video where he's leaning, right? You're meant to lean. So leaning requires to be on your toes, which means you shouldn't run with your heels, right? And that once you're leaning, your gravity is already pulling you forward. So then all you're doing with the momentum is that you're running at the same time. So that so that requires that um takes up less energy. Because you see people sometimes running on the street who do that thing and running up, running like that, and they're jumping up on that side, jumping on a pogo stick, like running, running like up. Like it's really weird, right? But I guess that comes from movies or whatever, or TV or adverts and shit, where the, the running was like, you know, jogging like this, uh, up and down, like some weird way. But actual running, if you look at sprinters or if you look at actual marathon runners, they've always got like a bit of a forward tilt going on. I'm going to try to get it up actually on the screen so that you guys can see what I mean. Uh, marathon, marathon runner pose, right? So you can see what, what they kind of look like. But it's always a forward tilt. But when you see average Joe running down the street, it's never that. So here it goes, right? So this is the picture I've got up on the screen. If you guys can't see it, then say love you, right? But I'm going to show up on the screen if you guys can see. Hopefully you're watching on YouTube. If you're not, then you have to bear with my visual description. So essentially, you got this runner running, right? Um, who's this? Is this Moses? Right, is, yeah. Moses and Bob, right? From... Um, uh, Mozop, sorry, from Kenya. Um, he's running along the street, and he's essentially like if you see from the back of his leg, right? So this this bit all the way onto his back. So like he's he, the leg that's still on the floor. It's basically straight, but he's like running at a tilt, so it's at diagonal. So that way, what essentially does that all you need to do then is kind of like uh, touch your feet on the concrete, sort of like drag yourself forward, like scrape, like proper scrape, right? But then what you need to do after that is that your heels need to come and touch your bum. So then when you're running, you're still running in like, a, your legs are still going in a circular motion. Instead of going all the way back and your leg flicking out, that's wasting energy, you're kind of keeping it really taut and compact and like, you know, going in a circle, a circle, and a circle, and a circle, and a circle, and a circle. Now, this way of running isn't easy, right? Because this is a fucking, you know, professional athlete who runs, uh, I don't know, under two hour marathons or just, or just over two hour marathons, right? So it's not something that's like super easy to do, but when you once you get it right, once you figure it out, like n running will never be the same again, and that's kind of where I'm I'm at at the moment. Um, I did this a lot the last couple uh, two years ago, but then I kind of stopped because I thought I was getting good. You know the general um, amateur's confidence. You know uh, I had weird like uh, delusions of grandeur. So now I've kind of got back on it again and I'm doing it again. But I recommend if you don't know this, if you don't know who Brian McKenzie is, I recommend you check out some of his videos on YouTube. He's got loads of like pose running method style tips and all that sort of shit you can check out um he told you how to like kind of get that methodology behind because basically what you need to do the first test out you need to kind of like stand five kind of inches from a wall and kind of like run on the spot jog on the spot and what you realize soon quickly is that <coughs> <coughs> sorry about that but if you're like me you you realize that your your feet always go too far back because you end up scraping a wall so what you end up what you want to do is you want to stand five inches from a wall with your back to it run on the spot without touching the wall so essentially you're making sure that your 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 kind of heels are touching the, your bum and not going way too far back right and then when you start running you want to then add a forward tilt to it so left side of the angle but like i said check out brian mckenzie's videos for it and to give you just an idea of what the the book has it's got these sections on it right these sections inside that kind of spec out uh what a week would look like running on the program and etc and i'll give you an example of what a week would look like so it says it's got like three boxes along the left so beginner intermediate elite for week one and on beginner it's got like crossfit so imagine even if you don't do crossfit imagine just doing some sort of like strength thing some sort of maybe strength and conditioning mixed up with a bit of fitness so maybe do like a circuit training right <clears throat> and you can find loads of them on google if you just if you just search around and then on tuesday it's got am and pm workout so am you do 45 minute of drills and then you do six to eight 200 meter sprints which i did today and then PM, you do CrossFit. So it's like you do like a, a CrossFit -y type workout, whether that's um, push ups and shit. There's a few in here actually that you can test. <coughs> so, sample CrossFit workout, he's got one here. He's got four rounds for time, six deadlifts, and 12 knees to elbows or toes to bar. So, you do 12 dead, so you do 12 dead, six deadlifts at like a good weight. Not nothing super easy and not nothing super hard. Again, I'd say maybe let's do 60% of your max weight or 70% of your max weight. You yeah? right? And then you want to do knees to elbows or knee or knee or toes to bar, whichever one you feel more comfortable to do. So that's what you do on the PM. And then Tuesday it will be CrossFit with a run bias, which will then, if you go to the book section, a run bias CrossFit training would be something like. Where is it? Is it got here? 
doesn't have it here. But essentially, it'll be something like um, 10, 10 rounds of 100 meters and 10 push ups. So you'd run 100 meters, do 10 push ups, 100 meters again, 10 push ups. Like that would be something run by us. Um, then on Thursday, you're scheduled to do 45 minute drills and then two to three 800 meters. So you're kind of like tripling what you did before on Tuesday. And then on Saturday, you do CrossFit or you're off. And then on Sunday, you do 30 minute drills and then a two minute time trial. So essentially, you're ramp. So this is for a 5K, right? You're never going full pelt and if you if you are good if you're never going full pelt so you're never using all your energy you're rarely running the full distance you might do it twice or three times a week just to kind of get the idea of how long the distance is but you're always doing it up until only 80 80 percent of your max so you're kind of only doing it until you know just just before your personal best so that when you come to come to race day you can perform and on top of that, you're also repeating sprint relays, intervals, right? Again and again and again. And that will, re and that requires a lot more, um, what would you call it? Cardiovascular endurance, right? So you're having to build that up again and again and again and again and getting stronger at holding a certain pace for a certain period of time. I'm hoping you guys can't hear that washing machine, but I'm pretty sure you can. You know, who wash machine, who washes clothes this early in the morning? Me! But whatever. Um, so you're eventually, eventually, you'll get to a point where you'll be able to run a lot quicker but with a lot more strength a lot more conditioning that's what i realized when i ran the uh bristol half marathon or chipping half marathon in september i felt that's probably the strongest half marathon i've ever run in my life like i felt so so strong like um i could have probably gone faster but i felt so strong in that position i was in i didn't feel like my form was depleting at all i was holding my pace i was maintaining my my uh my what you call it my pace for this for the most part of it my posture was right like, it was just amazing. So I highly recommend you check out if you're a runner, even if you're not a runner and you want to do something a bit different, you're bored of having to do two miles a day, three miles a day, pick up this book if you know what's good for you. Anyway, um, how the hell are you? Have you guys been, man? I've been fucking great. You know, running, keeping it easy, training myself, uh, trying to get myself fit in all these malarkeys. But yeah, man, this week's going to be fucking amazing. You know, I'm, I'm really excited. Um... I'm also excited because I'm DJing at the Heathcote and Star on Saturday. Um, so if you're in the area, come check it out. Your kid's going to be spinning a few tracks. I've got some new tracks to lay down for the Leighton Stone Shutford Mandem. It's going to be sick. Yeah, looking forward to that. Um, then I might probably, I might try and go out or do something else the rest of the weekend. Who knows? Let's see how it, go we'll see how it goes. I might go visit my parents and hang out with them for a bit because I see them in ages because I'm a shit son and even shit a brother. But it is what it is. <laughs> um, and the other thing I'm most excited for this week is uh, the, what you call it? Debut. Virgil Abloh's debut at Louis Vuitton. Kim Jones debut at Dior. I cannot wait, man. I think... <laughs> We are living in probably one of the best times to be a uh, streetwear, uh, fashion, sneakerhead, creator, commentator, influencer, critique, whatever it may be. This is the moment to get involved. If ever there was a sign, right? If you didn't think Louis Vuitton and Supreme was a sign, if you didn't think Complex going all in with doing Complex Com was a sign, um, if you didn't think all of these random uh, VCs investing millions and millions into uh, select department stores and online stores, this is the time. If you didn't think sneakers and stuff were uh, getting a reported 60 million and then they corrected it and said it was much less than that, but still a lot of money investing in a company wasn't the time. If you didn't think all those were signs, right? If you didn't even think that Kanye uh, being given full-on creative and manufacturing license to do exactly what you wanted with Yeezy with Adidas, if you didn't think that was a sign, then please, I implore you, take this as a sign, right? This is the greatest time to be involved in the scene right now. There are so many opportunities, right? There's so much out there, so much land for you guys to grab. And the, the, the best thing about it is none of it is going to impede anyone else. You doing your own little thing, you having your own little micro brand or your own little accessory brand or your own little whatever brand it is or your own little um, online magazine, radio show, promotion party, promotion, a party, agency. It's not going to encroach on anyone else's dream because there's so many opportunities to go uh, to, to kind of give around. Right. And if there aren't there to give around, go out there and take them. 
and I'd say this on the back of Virgil Abloh, not because I think he's shit at what he does, and not because I think he's uh, um, the best designer to ever, you know, grace the, the face of the earth. No, I say that because if anything, Virgil should be interesting to everyone out there because he is probably one of the best uh, connectors of culture out there, right? So they say, you know, like um, I'm sure he would say he's not uh the quote unquote best fashion designer but in terms of taking what's around in the current zeitgeist what's out in the current temperature what's out in the urethra and kind of bringing it down to its core essence putting his label on it um linking it to something that's uh that's got substance putting it on somebody that you respect and then putting it out there for you to buy <coughs> there's no one out there in the scene who's better than him at what he does and the thing that's encouraging is that something like that is actually um, copyable is actually imitatable you can actually try and do something like that yourself now if Virgil Abloh on top of that was also a world-class talent in terms of design and he was one of the best seamstress one of the best um, uh, drapers one of the best illustrators to ever grace fashion that's when everyone will have a problem right because there'll be this this amazing freak of nature who's got everything encapsulated but it's not like that and even if it was like that you would be the second person to come underneath him who could be the best connector. So, take his fucking lead, right? Take the example that he's set, where he's able to connect culture, he has an insane work ethic, and he's always, always about promoting his friends, right? I um, I think there's some people on there that kind of see it as nepotism, right? Uh, who kind of get their nose out of shape, bent out of shape about the idea that, you know, um, him and his cohorts seem to promote their friends and seem to compare their friends to greats, you know? Uh, Malcolm X, uh, what you call it, Martin Luther King, Andy Warhol, you know, they compare them to all these crazy icons and stuff. Me, personally, I'm not a fan of doing that kind of thing. I think it just puts unnecessary pressure, unnecessary attention. It attracts the, it attracts the wrong kind of person to watch what you're doing, right? Because I think, by and large, people that get it uh, n can make their own conclusion, right? That they can, they can form their own um, hypotheses on who you are or what you represent, right? You don't need your friend coming behind you and saying, oh, look, this guy's a new Warhol. Uh, he's a new Banksy and shit. It's like, it's unnecessary, right? But even if they do do it, right, who gives a shit? The main point of it is that now, right, we have a person who used to make, who used to put uh, lettering, vinyl lettering, or whatever it may be, screen print lettering on the back of rugby flannels as a head creative director or artistic director of Louis Vuitton men's. Now, that... Uh, some of you naysayers will say Louis Vuitton isn't even a, a, a clothing company. They've been mainly making luggage, clothing or something. They've only done uh, as of late. Whatever it may be called, whatever it may be said, right? It doesn't take away from Louis Vuitton being one of the most important brands, one of the most, probably one of the most profitable brands in the LVMH group. And they've now appointed someone from our own community to spearhead their menswear department, right? That means that we have the keys, we have the source, we have the ingredients, we have the, we have the, we have whatever it is in our current culture that's permeating across the sea, right? Across the other side, outside of the auditorium. We've been playing our own little warehouse parties ourselves. We've been promoting our own little things, doing our own little promotion, doing our own little fanzines. And now suddenly one of the biggest brands out there has come around our place and told us that they want our source in their venue. And the be the amazing thing about this Virgil Abloh debut, and even the, what Kim Jones is going to do at Dior, the amazing thing about these appointments, and even if you go back to uh, Demna Balenciaga, <coughs> they're not hiring you and asking you to water down your vision. They're not hiring you and asking you to uh, vanillify your vision or to kind of give it a mass appeal sheen, right? They want to take whatever you've got, your DNA, and just apply it to whatever resources that they have and that's the most encouraging thing i think about it because i think in years gone by if someone would have got this promotion i think a lot of us would have said it's the kiss of death right virgil's done off white's gonna be finished he's not gonna be creative anymore the ideas are gonna dry up they're gonna cancel they're gonna <coughs> stop him from making all these ideas but now we know that's not true <coughs> because essentially the kids or the consumers who want to buy the clothes that Virgil's making, they just want to buy those clothes, but maybe at a higher price bracket. They might want a certain label behind it, or they just want to be introduced to it in a different way. But they want that look. They want hoodies. They want jeans. They want T-shirts. They want trainers. That's what they want. They want cool accessories. They want waist bags across their chest. It's 
a real thing. <coughs> and I, <coughs> Jesus Christ, this hay fever is really fucking me up. And I cannot wait until the debut happens later on today. Um, we've already got a bit of a taste uh, about what's, what we're going to see, right? I think um, Virgil put up an image on his uh, Instagram just the other day of some shoes that are going to be debuting. So it's sort of like a Jordan S shoe, it looks like. Um, <clears throat> now, this is not something I'd necessarily wear. I'm not really a fan of it, per se. But I think, again, as... I think there's a picture of, of ASAP Rocky wearing them, right? So... I've never really been a fan of this kind of <clears throat> um, high top anyway. Um, Nike, I've got a couple of them. Um, I had a few vintage ones well in my collection that I forgot the name of them, what they were called. But I'm not really a fan of the overly retro look of the shoes in general. They're probably a bit too high for me too to wear. Um, but again, I'm interested to see what they look like in mids. Um, I'm interested to see what they look like in different color. But you can already see the direction that he's heading in, right? So I kind of look like the appeal of this. So let's come in to see what he does with that. Then we've got a picture again that you have on Instagram of an updated version of the Millionaires. If you know, the Millionaires were uh, sunglasses that I'm sure, is it Nigo or Pharrell made them? One of the two anyway, during the heyday of Babe and BBC. So it's kind of updated look of the Millionaires and they look fucking amazing. I'm sure Quaver and all those guys will be all over these fucking bad boys. Um, so they're going to be debuting, maybe, potentially. And then he's also got this video that debuted on Instagram videos that you can check out. Uploaded on my channels if you want to check it out. But I'm, I'm pretty sure they'll be available in other places. Uh, that kind of speaks a little bit about the collection. You can check out on Instagram TV. So that should be pretty cool. Um, and yeah, it's an interesting time. Man. It's a great time. Look, even this kid, the kid that does all the rhinestones um, on the hoodies and stuff. Uh, Bravado or something, right? Um, Ev Bravado. Is it Ev Bravado? Yeah, that's it. Murder Bravado or Ed Bravado. This kid's getting involved. It's, there's such a land grab that's happening right now that I think this is probably the best time to get involved in the scene or streetwear in general. If you're on the fence, if you're not sure what to do and you're always complaining about stuff and you think um, things aren't as good as they could be, put down the hate, stop fucking procrastinating and get out there and make something for yourself, right? Take part in culture. Contribute. Even if you think Virgil, what he's doing is shit and you think you should be given the opportunity, Prove yourself, man. Get out there. Have the same kind of work ethic and put your best foot forward and see what you can do. Let's see what you can do. But I'm really looking forward to it. I think it's going to be fucking amazing. I can't wait to see it. There's a show studio panel later on today. It's going to be That should be interesting too because some of those guys don't usually have a lot of good things to say about Virgil and Off-White in general. So I'm interested to see what their perspective will be on the show, whether they're going to give it the credit it deserves. Um, if it's good and if it's bad, I guess what it is, what it is. But I think I mentioned on my blog, you should check out too at defaultgoon.net, defaultgoon.net, defaultgoon.net. I mentioned on my blog the other day, I don't necessarily think it even matters if it's good or not, you know. I think it's that important of an appointment um, that it doesn't matter in the sense that I remember... I think we're still in a place where if you, even if you got money, right, and you work and you go to a luxury store and you're a black guy, you've always had the feeling of being followed around shops. I remember that happening in Selfridges, which is ironic, uh, considering how many black people work there, considering how hood of fuckers it is now, the, the designer section when people go and shop there and stuff. But I remember being followed around in parts of Selfridges. I remember being followed around for the most part in Dover Street, which probably still happens now for the most part. You know, you always get treated as the other. You always get treated as if, like, you don't know what you're talking about. I remember getting vibed out at Bond International, this old streetwear store in in uh, Dover, in uh, near Carnaby Street that used to be around, um, where this guy used to run it who was really important in London, and he was a fucking dick to me. Then I remember a couple of months after that occasion, Bobby Hundreds came and visited and he was someone that I spoke to on the internet. He was kind of like an internet friend and we went into a store together and then that same guy who was addicted to me the other day started licking my asshole. Like, I remember these things, right? I remember how shitty it was to look like me and go in some of those stores and not look like the people that own those stores, right? Not have the fucking uh, stupid jeans, not have the stupid t-shirt, uh, not be speaking about Nigo and Pharrell every two seconds, right? So you came with it from a different tilt. And I also remember what it was having that kind of same interest and in following fashion, right? I was exposed to fashion, uh, picking up the Style magazine inside the Sunday Times, right? I used to buy the Sunday Times every Sunday and collect the Style magazine. I actually, sad I threw it away. But I used, to, I used to have fucking stacks and stacks of Style magazines. I still have loads of fucking magazines here, actually. 
that would maybe uh, give you an idea of the kind of stuff I was into, but like stuff like this, industry magazine I used to buy back in the day. But I remember buying these kind of things back in the day, right? And getting, you know, just kind of people scoffing at you the idea that you'll be interested in this kind of thing like it wasn't it wasn't uh it wasn't a thing that was in vogue right someone that liked streetwear as much as i do or loved streetwear but was also in love with fashion and everything it represented right who could um i don't know who could quote random uh interviews to you right who was obsessed with tom ford who collected issue after issue of arena home plus blah 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 it was so difficult for, for people like us to get involved in the scene. Then we had streetwear, right? Then what we did is that we took streetwear and we just luxed it up, right? We made streetwear as luxurious as we could. We did cut and sew. We made salvage denim. We did the best accessories, the best collaboration. And we created cultural events around these things, right? Cultural moments, right? Whether they be galleries, whether they be parties, activations, listening parties. The culture was always within streetwear. Always. It always existed in streetwear. Never in fashion. Fuck the fashion shit. Then, because menswear is essentially not uh, as fashiony as women's wear, right? Uh, men in general uh, tend to buy clothes through necessity and function, maybe form, less so about fashion and trend as women are, right? This is a general thing. That's why when you look at the runways, you'd see more of a fashion tilt on fashion. On you see more of a fashion tilt on the women's runway, and you see more of a general style and kind of just putting stuff together in the right way and a kind of real vibe when it goes to the menswear part of things and because men's wear was floundering they only had one way to go they only had one pool to kind of uh, draw from it had to be streetwear street is where the source was so they went to streetwear dipped into that pool and then took that kind of source and sprinkled it on their collection but then that wasn't enough because you can't just take the source or the ingredients and sprinkle it on the collection you need to actually have the chef that's doing it be behind the thing that you're doing and now slowly but surely with the introduction of denmark with uh, virgil going to louis vuitton with kim jones soon to appear at dior you have these people who are storied who are entrenched in history uh, of streetwear who come from that aesthetic right who come from that lifestyle who, who are cut from that cloth now applying that same aesthetic to a big fashion label with all the resources in the world with all the help all the interns uh, all the assistants right helping you put together a cohesive collection there's only you can't fail you can't fail because you've, you've literally done the 10,000 hours of work that's got you up to this point now you're playing at the big league and you had you have the resources to kind of have you ever seen those Karl Lagerfeld uh, videos where he's he sketches something and then hands it to a, a seamstress and she just makes it right you have that kind of level <coughs> of craft because you know the, the streetwear adage over the time is like, you know, we have tons and tons of ideas sitting on our uh, Photoshop um, file, right? Like loads of PSD files of T-shirts and stuff that we never had, we never made in the end. But imagine being able to just sketch something and just give it to someone <coughs> for him to make for you. And that's where Virgil is at the moment. And I can't wait to see what he and Kim Jones do coming up right now. But talking about fashion and all that sort of malarkey, I thought, why not? Uh, speak a little bit about what's going on and kind of, um, I don't know, maybe maybe talk about some of the things that I saw that I thought were, looked fucking interesting. So, I'm going to get some of it up on the screen now. I'm going to make this a bit smaller. Blah, 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 blah. Duh, duh, duh. See if I can do this. See if it works properly. So, <clears throat> let's go. What have I seen so far at Paris Fashion Week that I thought has been amazing? Um, la di da, la di da. Paris Fashion Week is always the best for men's man. It's that's where all the big boys come out to play. Um, <coughs> so let's go back here. We'll start. <coughs> we'll just start in order it appears. <coughs> we'll start a bit here. So let's see. Uh, so this is Undercover, right? Undercover Spring Summer 2017. I mean, 2019, sorry, which is always one of the best collections to see at Paris. Um, purely for the theatrics, purely for the clothes. Jun Takashi is probably one of the uh, best minds in, in fashion at the moment. And I'm surprised he hasn't also been offered a big label, a big house. But maybe he has and he just doesn't want to do it. You know, those split priorities and stuff. That could be part of his kind of rationale. I'm not too sure. But yeah, here we go. So, um... Hopefully you guys can see this. Duh, duh, duh. Undercover. There we go. Right. Got it. Cool. So. 
we've got this looks from undercover right i hope you guys can see this i really like this stuff as well um what, what did i enjoy here let me take off the glasses so i can see this a little bit better there was these bit with the flags that i thought was super amazing actually um this this looks really cool i love again the use of patches that he does raf simon does the same thing too the sort of applique that they use on clothes is always something really, really interesting that I kind of love. Again, great accessories. That bandana is just probably everything, right? Um, this, such a great look. So, and loads and loads and loads of amazing things. This this sweatshirt is probably going to be everywhere, I'm assuming. Really, really nice. Oh, I, I didn't I didn't see the nails that they have painted on it too. So, I def that's like look 10 on Undercover Spring Summer 2019 if you haven't checked it out already. Um, I'm not sure what the shoes are. I love the motocross pants. They look really cool. I think there's been a lot of that this 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 season, right? Or this year in general. A lot of people doing motocross inspired work. So that should be interesting to see where else that goes. Um, again, some more motocross things. Oh, he's got some. He's got some Nike new Nike collabs as well. We can see there too. Uh, look at races. It looks like. So yeah, undercover as per usual was just fucking amazing. There's nothing in it you're not gonna like. Uh, a few Dr. Martin collaborations. It looks like, right? I'm sh are they Dr. Martins or are they undercover shoes? Might be to be undercover shoes. Um, not might not be Dr. Martin collabo, but they look really cool. Um, so yeah, kind of like a duck boot, but they've, yeah, they've, he's got some Dr. Martins actually in his collection. I thought this bit at the end was really really awesome. I'm not sure what that stick is. I'm not sure if it's like a blind thing. People might get, you know, the PC culture guys might be, get a bit annoyed by it, but I like it. And I like most of this, but I think it's really, really nice. Especially these jackets too. And, these, and this, this hairstyle reminds me of that collection from Rick Owens where they kind of had the, the hair kind of done up in weird points. Kind of look like devil horns. So that looks fucking awesome. As per usual. I'm not sure. How, I'm not sure how much of this stuff will actually make it into the stores, though, because there's just there's so many looks, there's so many pieces on each. On, there's so many pieces on each look, actually. You know, that's an issue I have with it as well. I'm not sure if they're gonna make all of it's gonna make make it to the stores, so you can't pick up a lot of it. But whatever is available, I recommend you you pick it up. Probably one of the best designers that we have right now in the menswear. Um, yeah, always amazing. Again, like I'm saying, I'm surprised he hasn't been offered a position somewhere in a big in a big house. But I'm assuming he probably hasn't. He probably has and just hasn't taken it. So on the cover has been a real big draw for me. And of course, Raph Simmons, right? Now, number one, these coats look fucking sick, right? I'm not sure if they're satin or what they are or if they're silk, but the coats look amazing, the overcoats. That's what probably the best statement pieces that he's done um, from this collection so far. I'm not sure what color I'd go for, whether it be, whether it be white, uh, this kind of blue, black, green, or yellow, like... The coats just look amazing. Probably green will go really well with my skin color. And then the other thing that I like from this collection are the boots, right? These sort of like Chelsea boot kind of style things. They also remind me of the last collection from Louis Vuitton, the women's collection actually. I think it might be Resort that Nic Nic Nicolas Gesquier did recently. And he kind of did these, these like really long uh, boots that kind of look like Rico in sock boots, right? A little bit kind of style, same thing. But these Chelsea boots, however they are, look fucking sick. Right, and I'm really hoping these these make it uh, into the stores. I'm pretty sure they will, especially in this silver kind of color. Oh, so fucking good, man! So good. I see a few people look look. See this guy here staring at them, right? He knows, bro. Those boots look fucking. Oh, it's Kim Jones, isn't it? Ah, it's Kim Jones. Look at the boots. Well gone. <laughs> the boots look sick, bro. The boots and the fucking backpack. Kim Jones knows. This stuff looks amazing, man. Look at it. So fucking good. So Raph Simmons obviously smacked it. Um, every look is amazing. I love the bags. I love the shirts. Love the draping. Love the shapes. This even the, even just this little detail, the scarf, just looks so cool, doesn't it? Look at that. And I'm not sure if it wraps. Does it slit into that slit? That's amazing, right? It kind of tucks into the slit on the side of the jacket. But look at those boots. Look how good those fucking boots look, man. Shit. Can't wait. Cannot wait. Cannot wait. So yeah, good jackets, amazing knitwear as per usual. Knits are always really, really well, well done. I'm liking this sort of effect as well on the on the shirts. It kind of reminds me of that Balenciaga shirt everyone was kind of getting crazy, um, crazy offended by. You know that kind of the shirt with a kind of shirt stitched on top of a shirt, right? It kind of reminds me of that kind of style. 
So you've sort of got the back. It also reminds me, you know, like on, on guys that do, I have it on the back of my jacket. If you have a metal, ba- if you have a band t-shirt that doesn't fit you well and you cut it out and you put the back of it on the back of a j- jean jacket, it's all like taking that, but then taking it a step further and putting it on the back, on putting it, like attaching it on the side of something, you know, sort of like letting it hang off. I thought that, that's, that's a pretty cool method of doing things. Um, yeah, all looks amazing, man. I fucking love everything about it. Those boots are just so good, though. Look at those boots. Just look at that look overall. So fucking good, no? This guy here, the back nose, man. It's so good. Runway too. Everyone's standing, right? Super cool. These coats are just so much. They're so, 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 so good. So, yeah, can't wait to see those boots in the actual um, collection or runway shown. Um, we're coming to touch them and feel them and see what they look like in hand. But yeah, those boots are just insane. I'm sorry, but the boots are just so fucking good. So fucking good. Oh, I love that earring as well, actually. Oh, look at the earring. It's sort of kind of like a... Um, it appears, yeah, it appears like a bottle opener. You see that earring? That is fucking sick, isn't it? I mean, I got, I got, let, me, let, me, let me screenshot that, actually. There you go. That is fucking sick. I love that. I didn't even notice that in the beginning. But yeah. All amazing work for Mr. Raf Simmons. What else do we have here? More jackets. Yeah, just just the best, isn't it? One of the best designers that we have at the moment. So yeah, big up Mr. Raf. Is that the guy from GQ from uh oh, Corporate Lunch, right? That's the guy from Corporate Lunch at GQ, isn't it? Standing there and that. Sick. Um, who else did well? Uh, this collection by Le Maire, right? It was was actually really good too. I like the fact that it was taken, was it taken in the streets of Paris somewhere? The pictures, they look really, really cool. <clears throat> so the Mayor Spring Summer 2019. Let me quickly read the review, see what it says here. Because September show will be uh, co-ed, this collection was presented in the showroom. Yeah, that's not to say that Christopher Le Maire and Sarah Lynn Tran managed to avoid uh, live feedback on their clothes. We shot the pictures on the street in Patin, in Patin, just outside Paris. Okay, awesome. And a lot of the passersby had something to say. Many people liked the shoes. And this one woman was really excited by the volume and the pleated pants. She said, ah, this takes me back to the 80s. So, yeah, awesome. I'm glad I did it in the street. So, it was, it was take, pictures were taken in the actual real streets, as they say, right? I love the, and again, I think the woman said it right. The shapes are amazing. The volumes, really, really well done, man. I'm not, fan, I'm not really a fan of the shoes. They're probably too a bit African uncle for me, personally. But I love the I love this look as well. Like kind of Heide Aikerman, but a little bit more relaxed, you know? Like pleated trousers, a bit more wide, tucked in shirt. These shirts we I saw this kind of style of shirt saw everywhere at Primavera Sound, man. That style of shirt with like jean cutoffs and white socks and trainers, like everywhere. Everyone was wearing the same fucking outfit. So annoying. <laughs> um But yeah. That was everywhere. Another great volume. And oh I love this fucking suit. The colours are amazing. The shoes look actually quite good here, but it's not something that I'd want to personally wear, but it looked really nice there, actually. I'm not going to lie. Um, yeah, again, very, very well done. Even here, they look fa- fairly fucking good there. Again, it all looks really, really nice. Oh, I love a, I love an all-red outfit, innit? Like, all-red outfits, there's something really nice about all-red outfit, I think, in my opinion, again. Look at that. It just looks really nice, man. Me like it, me like it. So, yeah, so Le Mer was really nice, I thought. You should check that out, too. Um, who else was nice? Valentina was fucking awesome. Uh, White Project was cool. Ambush. Off-White, I didn't really like. I didn't think there was anything that great in that collection coming up. Hopefully, there's better in the Louis Vuitton. But, yeah, loads of cool stuff happening in the world of fashion and streetwear. I thought maybe this would maybe a good time to check in and let you know how excited I was for today. Kim Jones, Virgil, LV, stand-up streetwear gang. We made it. And, yeah, I guess that's maybe a good place to end the podcast for now. Um, did you guys watch uh, Iran versus Spain yesterday? Uh, if you didn't, you didn't, you didn't miss nothing. But, fuck me, man. What a what a terrible game, isn't it, from Iran from general, right? Super anti-football. Um... But also Spain didn't Spain weren't as uh, potent up front as I thought they would be in attack, right? This World Cup looks like the, to be the World Cup of the strikers, right? You need someone that scores you goals because for the most part teams are fairly cagey. Games are not that as open as you want them to be. Um, teams are very good at defending for the most part, less so at attacking. So it's interesting to see what happens when the 
better sides face each other. We might get a lot of nil nils, a lot of penalties, um, a lot of penalties, a lot of extra times. I'm predicting when it comes to this World Cup. But overall, it's been alright. Um, I heard someone mention the other day that they wanted to raise the teams up to 48 teams. I don't know why they want to do that. Don't do that, please, because it's already making my eyes bleed having to watch some of these shit nations play, and it's a bit, it's a bit frustrating too because. Unfortunately, if you're like an Iran, a Saudi Arabia, a Morocco and stuff, you've it's it's sad because the World Cup is, you know, you're presenting the best players you have in your country in that given sport. So if you can't do anything better than what you're showing on TV, there isn't much more room for you to grow. You have hit a ceiling. You're kind of like a CM Punk, right? You've been training for six years and you're still not good enough. So it's like there's nothing you can do. You're just not good at what you're trying to do, right? Um... Or at least you're not as good as a level that you're trying to play at, right? You might be good subjectively. You might be good in your gym. You might be good in your little friendship group. But for the level you're trying to compete at, you're just not good enough, unfortunately. And that's what happens when you watch the World Cup sometimes. So it's a bit, it's a bit annoying. I still love football, so I'm gonna watch all the games as if I have, if I'm able to watch them. I'm gonna watch every single game that I can. But bloody hell, man, it's, it's been hard work. I tell you that it's been fucking hard work. Um, England were great to watch actually. Um, a little bit naive fluffed a lot of chances they can't do that against some of the better sides but i'm pretty sure they'll be able to get outside that group easily especially since they've got i think saudi arabia next right i think so um instead of so belgium's the last game so that should be a bit of a cakewalk should be able to seal up the qualification from the group and then have the belgium game be a sort of like you know uh a kind of free throw where you can kind of maybe play some players who haven't played yet or even if you want to go for a juggler try and win the group but whatever um yeah it's been all right been a decent world cup um Again, no early favourites so far. Everyone's kind of, again, on the same level I mentioned before. It's kind of, it seems like a, a World Cup for the attack. It seems like a World Cup for teams that are competent in defending and also can take their chances, which probably says, probably you can say that about a lot of more tournaments. But, you know, it seems very cagey. Uh, people are very concerned about not being an idiot or not making silly mistakes, which can be annoying for the uh, for the uh, spectator. But I get it if you're an athlete. You know, these things only come around every four years. The last thing you want to do is go gung ho like um, Wojciech Chesney did against uh, Poland against Senegal. Run out of your goal super late, the ball kind of passed you, and the guy kind of kicked the ball into an empty net. That's not probably what you want to do. So yeah, World Cup 2018 happening. We don't know who's gonna win it because we ain't watching it as much as we should be. But yeah, anyway, that's been the Action of Show episode number 78. Another one in the can, Canada in. Yeah, just came back from running and got that fucker inside involved right so if you're out there and you're hanging around and you're not doing what you need to do work hard man do the fucking work do the work and um, this be episode number 78 i'll be djing at the heath cotton star coming up very very soon on saturday right um june 23rd check out my website you know, zinga for all that kind of information i am um, is it 23rd of june why do you not remember your only date you have on the weekend 23rd of june saturday 9 p.m till late 9 p.m until 1 a.m come true and hang out with the boy i'll be djing there what else happening on the weekend loads of other shits happening on the weekend as ever click my uh, audible link in the description uh help me out let me get let me buy more books if you click that link you'll get yourself a 30 day free trial as well as one free book credit for you to use and you can then you know you can read an audio book you can listen to it on the way to work you can listen to it at work you listen to it while your friends are talking to you because friends always chat shit um and you can do all those amazing things plus more as always, visit my website at xnozinga.com for everything concerning me, blog, photography, DJ mixes, um, social media links, all that malarkey. And I'll see you again very, very soon. Xnozinga Show episode number 78, over and out. Connecting with the mandem. It's been amazing. See ya!